then share your inception story of yes. cohesion with us? I, at first, well, my husband's been brewing for 10 years. He always told me when we first met that he never wanted to start his own brewery. And I was like, <laughs> great, like, <laughs> me either. <laughs> we actually went to Prague on our honeymoon. Awesome. Um, and that was the first time we ever went. Um, his parents actually were the ones that told us to go there. They were like, you, you'll love oh, yeah. it, like, yeah. everything about it. So we got there and we just, I think, saw a beer scene that just wasn't really done justice here like the just everything between the service you know the beer itself just this like culture around like drinking beer is just such a part of their lives oh, i yeah. think was just so cool and we were like no one is really seeing like the full picture when they release the check beer here like mm -hmm. so that's where the kind of the idea spurred it's like you know there wasn't really anyone in denver focusing obviously on that there's a few people in the country maybe that are sure. focusing on it but um, we definitely wanted to kind of dive all the way in. We knew if we were going to do it, it was going to be pouring the right, you know, the beer in the right way. It was sure. going to be the service methods. We were going to do basically all of the production methods the way they do it. So, sure. yeah, I think like in terms of what makes Czech beer special, I mean, there's obviously elements on the production side that sure. are very different, but sure. um, we stick to a lot of that here, you know, between just the water profiles, decoction mashing, open fermentation, yep. Yep. horizontal lagering. I think too, like the special part, and obviously that's what people see when they come here, is just definitely the service. Like oh, yeah. it doesn't look anything like you know what we normally get here between like the head and the foam on the beers, the lucre towers. I think it's just the whole experience that I think got us really excited about sure. getting us into it. Sure. Well, it looks really good. You're thank you. It. Thank you. <laughs> thank you for going along with the idea, despite him not wanting. To <laughs> I know. Now we're right. here. It's like, <laughs> hey. <laughs> You find a good idea, you got to roll with it. <laughs> right. Talk to us about this location. Yes. It's pretty unique. Why? Yes. <laughs> How did you snag it? Totally. Well done. <laughs> yeah, we actually, like, right from the get-go, had a very specific target, I think, for the location. Um, okay. We really were just looking in, like, the Cole Clayton neighborhoods, like, Park Hill neighborhoods. I think yeah. we had a desire to, like, be in a more neighborhood setting. And sure. if you go kind of past this building i mean for miles it is just like neighborhoods so yep. we get so many people that come here sure. walk over bike over so we kind of had like our eyes set in this general vicinity right. um this was actually an old um world war ii army warehouse depot yeah. and it has been around obviously for forever a couple amazing. owners you know turned it over but um this company came in and they rebranded it as york street yards and they want to make sure. it into like a mixed use space obviously still some vacancies to be filled but i think we're excited i think just about like the potential it has like oh, you yeah. could easily like come here for a day and get coffee and breakfast somewhere like go to a brewery you know go get your hair done so i think like yeah. we were excited just about the potential that this full space had absolutely any uh any issues mm -hmm. with um uh, integrating any of the czech brewing techniques as far as location or uh even with the denver beer scene i think it was interesting because at first we thought we would get some pushback right sure, like yeah we I, thought I you know that. people were going to be like oh what is this beer with like you know so much foam on the top so like we were kind of ready and prepped our bartenders pretty well too right from the get-go of like hey you're gonna get pushed back like people are gonna be confused like you're gonna have to explain what we're doing why we're doing this but honestly i think the reception and was honestly better than we imagined like i think people were just excited about something new and like sure. we're just pumped to learn about this culture and like yeah. hey this is like how they do things over there like great like let's try it so um i think more than anything people just were super curious about what we were doing okay. and just given the fact that like denver's beer scene is already <laughs> so like rich and knowledgeable though right like we're lucky that we have consumers that are like already entering at kind of like a baseline knowledge of like what beer is because yeah. we have so much great beer here so yeah. i think i don't know if this honestly could have worked in another city so sure. it, it just helps that we have just such like a rich beer culture here too. And a lot of people who travel, right? I mean, that totally. kind of goes hand in hand, yeah. right? It's not just happening here. Totally, and it's interesting too, because we actually like Denver and Boulder has uh, a, a decent Czech population, yeah. which is super yeah. fun. So yeah. we, every Sunday now have this group of Czechs. It could be 
three of them. It could be 20 of them oh, that wow. come in every single Sunday. How cool. um, they sit at a table and they, you know, come here and drink the beer. They normally only have one beer that they like because that is also very common. Yep. Like yep. even having six beers on here, they're like, why so many choices? Like we, we, don't, need one. we don't need this. So um, it's just been fun to like integrate with them and sure. that too. Do they have, what's their fit? What's their go-to? They love a good 12 degree. So oh, we sure. um, do have it on our Cohesion 12. That's okay. kind of one of our core all the time beers. Yeah. Um, it's definitely like a very commonly drank style, like over in Prague too. With a focus on the classics then. Yeah. That, that being said, and how do you then ensure authenticity totally. while incorporating local ingredients? Yeah. I mean, that was like a big thing for us. It's like, if we're doing this here, it's like, how can we make it as authentic as possible? Like yeah. we don't want to feel like we're, you know, recreating something and not doing it justice. So I think for us, we use all saws hops. So we do stick to kind of the traditional ingredients from a hop standpoint in terms sure. of what they use in their beer. Um, but local ingredients too was like very common in like the Czech brewing history. Like they use the malt that was like right in their own backyard. Sure. Um, so we actually worked with a local maltster. So we use all Colorado local malt awesome. um, from Troubadour Maltings up in Fort Collins. That's it, yeah. <laughs> they're, they're amazing. And we actually um, worked with them to develop a custom base malt. So okay. um, it helps, um, it's kind of an under modified malt. So when we do de 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 decoction mashing, mm -hmm. um, it, it works a little bit better for us. Okay. So um, they've been such a great partner because they can kind of oh, customize okay. it. Okay. And like our dark beers, they roast it to literally like, the second the yeah. that we wanted to be at, which wow. is super fun. So like working with someone who is local, like it just gives us the opportunity to make it what we need to make it for the beers to turn out the way sure. that they do. How do you balance then any sort of desire to innovate with the tradition? Our like core principles in terms of production methods, we, we keep to for every beer that we make. Um, we will always have kind of six beers on tap. Three are normally like our core beers. So it's um, 12, 10 degree and Tamave, which okay. two aren't up there right now. But, um, and then three will be rotators. So like sure. with those rotators, we get the opportunity to like do a seasonal beer. So like in the fall, we have our Polo Tamave, which basically is like half dark. Okay. Um, we do a like winter lager. So a, a like very dark roasty lager. I did get to have some yeah. that was incredible. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, I think for us too, like collabs are a really fun way to be able sure. to do something a little bit outside Great of the point. box. Um, I think it's fun to be able to take like what we do really well, what someone else does really well, and kind of try to mash those two together. And it always ends up being, you know, something different and maybe something we would never have brewed just on our own, sure. but because we were doing it with someone else, sure. it allows us to kind of step outside of our box a little bit. Let's get into uh, Malata then. Yes. I mean, that's a huge, huge thing. Uh, we're super excited for that. So this is your third annual yes. release. Um, on International Women's Day, yes. which was yesterday, but that's Happy okay. Happy International Women's Day. <laughs> Amen to that. What a, what a great support. You know, as I was perusing social media yeah. and everything, I was like, oh my gosh, like I, it feels so much bigger this year than it has been. And maybe it's just because I'm paying more attention, but I don't know. It, I think, it feels I mean, for us, really I think good. like, yeah, it's been awesome. I mean, we have had so much fun with it and I think we love to celebrate like International Women's Day. So every year for Mulata, we do um, a women's brew day. So even right. before the, the beer release, we have um, invite like other women from the industry to come into the space to help brew the beer, which is always just so fun. And I think it it's a good opportunity to kind of get that group together, um, you know, even for like our own staff being able to invite, sure. you know, others over to come brew the beer. So that day always is fun. And then obviously getting to release it on International Women's Day. Right is just, you know, such a fun time. And I think this year we um, introduced kind of a new element to this, which is our scholarship yep. with MSU Denver, um, yeah. which is so fun. They've been such amazing partners. Um, so this year, um, proceeds from Mulata will go towards the scholarship that we've um, kind of committed to um, over the next couple of years to fund their um, brewing ops program. Awesome. So it'll be specifically for their School of Hospitality brewing ops program. Okay. Um, and yeah, it's open to anyone, but obviously like our goal with that is to just kind of remove any financial barriers if we can to kind of get more sure. like women and non-binary uh, individuals into the space. I love that. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. And congratulations. Thanks. That's, that's, uh, that's so cool. So really the creation of the Mulata Brew 
Yeah. Talk, talk a little bit more about that and reflecting on your values. It's always been about like the community we surround ourselves with. Um, you know, the majority actually of our staff is female, which is yep. awesome. Yep. But I think for us, it's just we wanted an opportunity to kind of rope in the community that around that is around us that honestly supports us so much as well. Like we've sure. gotten such great reception just from the industry as a whole. So we really just wanted to kind of have a day where people can kind of come in and share in that and also just share what we do. Like I think I we place a big importance to you on just like continuous learning and just like giving an opportunity for other brewers to be able to, you know, see the process we have and share sure. ideas and thoughts about sure. kind of how we do things versus how they do things. So, like think of any other industry, right? Like you work in any other industry, it's like, so no, we silent. don't share our trade secrets. No. Like, no, we're not going to like hang out with, you know, another company yeah. and just like spend the day working with them. Like that's always what's blown my mind is like before, you know, really even coming into this industry, it's just like the amount yeah, amount of collaboration and just like willingness to help. I think everyone just wants this industry to do well. Yeah. And like they're willing to kind of, you know, help someone else out because like, you know, rising tide rises all boats. Malata, yeah. talk to us about the, the name. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So we don't, we stick to pretty um, traditional Czech beer naming conventions, which honestly is great because <laughs> we don't have to name beers all that often. But when we don't, um, I think we still like to have a tie back to the Czech Republic. So Malata is actually named after a woman named Malata. She was um, just a, a politician during World War II um, that actually fought for women's rights and just democratic principles um, just during the communist era. So okay. honestly, like such an amazing backstory. There's actually a whole movie um, done about her okay. uh, called Malata. Um, okay. So yeah, so we named the beer after her, I think just to kind of, you know, everything we're trying to do here or some of the same things she was still fighting for back sure. um, in that era too. So sure. I think it's just a little nod to, you know, Love Czech that. Republic's history, but also, you know, obviously just, yeah, the fight to, you know, keep, keep women's rights kind of top of mind. Absolutely. <laughs> Crazy how we fell out of favor, but we're, we're on our <laughs> way back. Talk us through uh, the brewing process from Malata, if you can, and how oh, yeah. it gets into Czech brewing methods. We um, stuck to pretty traditional, yeah, our traditional Czech brewing method. So, um, you know, we try to match our water profile to be a little bit closer to Pilsen. We did a decoction mash um, for this beer as well. Um, we actually did an open fermentation, which we can yes. yeah, go in there and yeah, check that check out. out. Um, we have another beer in there right now, obviously not Malata, but um, another very important step uh, in the Czech brewing process. <laughs> um, what was fun about this beer, which again, just like these types of beers allow us to kind of step outside of our, our normal methods, but we actually dry hop this beer, uh, Malata, with um, Saz and Strata, which Strata is in a hop that we use all the time and yeah. we don't really dry hop any of our beers. So it's kind of just yeah. a fun twist onto it to kind of, and we've actually done a, a dry hopping with every single one of the Malata beers we've released. So it's kind of been a tradition now, just uh, that that's kind of the approach we take with that beer. I would really like to try it before we go. Yeah. That would be awesome. Tell us a little bit about the, um, the horizontal yes. lagering tanks. I feel like we have to touch upon that. Yeah, I mean, outside the fact that they just look yeah. beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, it's just been kind of in the history of, you know, lager brewing as a whole. Like, they obviously didn't used to have metal tanks. They were, you right. know, putting them into barrels that right. laid on their side. So when they made, you know, tanks, they made them, you know, look very similar to that. Um, you know, what they were used to, you know, sure. seeing. So, you know, there's, you know, benefits now. They've discovered, like, for the beard, actually, lager it that way. But um, honestly, it's just another piece and way we can kind of stick to just that tradition that they have, you know, over in check for sure. Yeah, and nod to it, for sure. Yeah. I love that. Beyond the, the scholarship, um, uh, your, the portion of the proceeds donating to the yeah. scholarship fund, what else are you doing beyond that? Again, like back to just being in this community, in this neighborhood specifically, I think we try to find um, 
you know, charity foundations that are like hyper local. So I think we always have a goal of kind of like think globally, act locally. So sure. um, there's a few really amazing charities that kind of are in this space. There's actually like Denver Food Rescue. Sure. Um, it actually operates out of this um, building as well. They oh. actually store their bikes like right across in that storage container oh, right across cool. the parking lot. Um, so we've worked with them on a few things. Grow House is another um, just food inequity type program that we've worked with in the past that's awesome. Um, I think for us, it's just like trying to find those that are like right nearby and just kind of in the heart of where we operate just sure. to make an impact just like with the people that are right around us. Abby, Big Raven Bread, she actually operates um, a bakery out of her house in the neighborhood and she pops up every Thursday here. So it's yes, like, please. yeah, so it's stuff <laughs> like that. It's just like, how can we like make this neighborhood just, I mean, it's already awesome, but it's oh, like, yeah. how can we just be a part of that and just highlight that even more? Sure. This industry is obviously doing really well at highlighting diversity yeah. and inclusion. How are you going about creating that welcoming environment? I, you yeah. seem to be on top of it, but give me a little, I mean, <laughs> a little more if you will. I mean, it's hard, right? I mean, yeah. we, we try our best for sure. I think it's like comes from day one just trying to like make it uh, something that's top of mind in your like culture and everything from hiring to like what you're you know putting into practice in the space. I mean, we put our bartenders through uh, trainings um, through Blue Bench. They're a company that um, specifically likes to create like a safe, um, welcoming environment. So they go through like, hey, how do you step in if you see a, a customer who's being harassed by someone else? So it's the little things like that. Wow. I think it's just like, how do you make that super intentional? And I think also just like trying to make sure our staff like is representative of the people that we're serving, sure. right? Like, sure. I think if someone's able to kind of walk into a space and see someone that they can relate, relate to about, and yeah. resonate with, like, they're immediately going to feel just more welcome, Absolutely. more safe in a space. So Absolutely. I think, you know, those are just a couple little things. But it's, it's definitely something, you know, I think we keep always trying to do better at and do more of. But, um, I, yeah, I think it's something that's really important to us for sure. And I think we've, sure. you know, seen so many other amazing breweries that, do this so well that it's like we've you know learned a lot along the way about what we would want it to look like if it was you know our own so and here it is yeah, yeah. <laughs> here it is here we go. <laughs> going back to the mulatto release yeah your commitment in mm -hmm. to the community do you have a specific memorable memorable moment over the last three years that oh, gosh. stuck out for you no i mean i think like specifically with mulatto like those the brew days are always just like sure. so okay. fun like i think honestly it's just about like the people that come out for it and people that come out for the release and again it's just like having them all here like supporting you know what we're doing and also supporting like the same cause that we're all so excited about so Love it. that for us we did a little music video bingo last night yeah. of all women artists which was also so much fun so <laughs> yeah it was just a good time they're always just you know a day of kind of like celebration and like our our staff also has just like an awesome time with it yeah. so yeah okay. all in all just like good good days and good good people for well, sure <laughs> love that any any advice you want to give um, women, yeah. uh, non-binary, non aspiring to enter into yeah. the brewing craft beer world? I think for me, I think the thing that I always like to highlight, and we talked a little bit about this earlier, is like backhouse and brewing is not the only thing in the brewing world, right? Yeah. Like I think for anyone who's trying to get in, like I think just understand like your your strengths and figure out how that can fit into this industry, right? Like sure. there's there's bartenders, there's front of house, there's, you know, general managers, there's sales, there's brewery finance. Like there are yeah. so many different aspects of this industry that isn't just a back of house position. Yeah. So yeah. I think for me, and, and honestly, that's why we love MSU Denver so much too, partnering with them. So they, their program, the Brewing Ops program does not just focus on brewing. So they actually are teaching students how to manage a brewery, um, like how to run a front of house, like the finances, the accounting. So like they focus on just more than just brewing, which we thought was so awesome because I think for us, it's like the way we can get more people in is for them to understand like how much opportunity and like different positions actually sure. exist within this industry. It doesn't have to be, you know, behind the scenes in the back yeah. of the house. Yeah. yeah. What is a favorite style of foam to drink? 
<laughs> I feel like I'm just classic, like Holiday Kapoor, like that's just the classic pour you get over there. It's, you know, mostly beer with, you know, a good, good head on it. But we do love a good, uh, we call them milk shots here. So yeah. we kind of introduced them as a way. Yeah, to, like also <laughs> it was honestly like born out of just like a way to have people try the foam without just like committing to a beer. So like when we first opened, we're like, oh yeah, just pour them like a little shooter of the foam like make them taste it, make them understand like this is what they're drinking. And then of course it just like turned into like now one of our like staff's favorite way to like <laughs> drink sure. anything is sure. to share in a milk shot. So <laughs> I'd say that's, that's, a, that's probably a close second. Help us out with the... Yeah, this was our little, we made these at yeah. um, the, the open because we're like, oh, people are going to walk up to the bar and not, not know how to say this. But um, Tamave, that is one of our like core styles of beer. Um, Svetle, uh, yeah. Lejak is the next one. Vyshepny, Hladinka, which is the poor style yeah. I talked about. Yep. Uh, Schnitt, which is basically um, yeah. the half pour. Yeah. Um, and then Liko. So all, literally translating also, to milk. Outside of cohesion, of course. Yeah. Do you have a favorite Colorado craft brewery? I mean, it's there? just, it's so hard to pick. <laughs> um, I, I love Cerebral. I think they're doing awesome stuff. They're awesome people. Um, I think we also, we a new one that actually was new to us to be visited was um, Second Dawn out in um, Aurora. Okay. They're doing awesome stuff. I think they just turned two. Okay. Um, but yeah, we were super impressed. They were making really awesome beer. So um, it's fun to still have, you know, new spots popping up that are, yeah, new favorites too. Do you have a favorite Czech beer and food pairing? Czech is definitely big on just all things meat they yep. don't really eat a lot of vegetables <laughs> nope, nope. so potato, i pancakes potatoes I they vegetable. like a good potato they like a good meat um dish so for me i think um beef tartare and i have like a very specific place in mind we go to in prague they like give you the toast with the garlic on the side you like rub this like toasted bread to get like a garlic bread and then the tartare on top is uh, amazing yeah. and then obviously <laughs> just a, like classic pilsner or kel i think with that yeah. is is yeah pretty awesome fun question yeah if you could be any beer in the world what beer would you be and why huh i <laughs> i think honestly i'll go back to a pilsner cal okay. because to me i feel like it's distributed in probably most countries in the world and i just would want to be able to go wherever explore any yeah. country i wanted to so yeah that. not only is it a good beer but it would take me take me some new places. All right, last one. Yeah. Um, what message do you hope with the Mulata Brew and its associated causes yeah. uh, convey to your customers and the broader community on International Women's? Yeah, I mean, I think it's just this is something that is important to us for sure, and I think we're doing it because it is important to us, and I think you know we founded this brewery like wanting to be able to also like make a difference um so for us it's just a cause that's i think near and dear to our hearts and i sure. think like for us i'm just excited to you know see like the next generation of students that come through this program with a scholarship yeah. um and kind of see what they do because i think like you know the more women uh, you know we get into this space i think um and more diversity just in general like it only can do it good. So I think, I you know, that. I'm just excited to see what happens with it and just who is able, you know, who's going to be able to come in, into this space just sure. as a part of the program. So I love yeah. that. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. This is so, this is so fun. Thank you. Yeah, I appreciate yes. it. <laughs>